In this lesson, I am going to discuss matrix of linear transformations. Let us recall that if we are given a matrix A, there is a linear transformation associated with it. Let's say that this is the set of matrices, and this is the set of linear transformations. We can associate each matrix to a given linear transformation, and this linear transformation is denoted by TA. Now, the question is the converse of this one, meaning to say, if I get a linear transformation, is there a matrix that we can associate with this linear transformation? Before we can answer that question, let us first recall coordinate vectors. Suppose that we have a vector space with ordered bases. Take note, this is important. It has to be ordered. And suppose that we have a vector v in our vector space, v. Of course, since v is in v, it can be written as a linear combination of the elements in this ordered basis. And the coordinate vector of v with respect to this ordered basis, b, is just a column matrix wherein we are listing all the coefficients. A1 is the coefficient of V1, A2 is the coefficient of V2, and so on. So for example, let us consider the coordinate vector of V equals 1 plus X plus X squared with respect to the ordered basis 1 X X squared of P2. What will be the coordinate vector of V? So remember that we are listing the coefficients of 1, X, and x squared that appears in this linear combination. So hence, this is equal to 1, 1, 1 because v is 1 plus 1 times x plus 1 times x squared. We are now ready to define matrix representation of a given linear transformation. Suppose that we have a linear transformation from v to w and suppose that b and b prime are ordered bases of v and w respectively. Let us suppose that the ordered basis b for v consists of these vectors v1 up to vn. Here is how you form the matrix representation of t. First you get the images of the basis elements so we have t of v1, t of v2 up to T of Vn. Once we have that, we will get the coordinate vector of this with respect to what basis. Take note that these images appear in W. So therefore, we will get the coordinate vector of this with respect to B prime. So, these coordinate vectors would be the column of your matrix representation. And you denote this matrix by this. Matrix representation of T with respect to B and B prime. Take note that I start here. So, the basis B here is the basis of your domain. And then this one is the basis of your codomain. Here is a theorem which tells us how matrix representations work. Suppose we have our x here and x here lies in V. T of x here lies in W. When we apply T on x, that's T of x and that is of course an element in W. What we want to do is to visualize this transformation in terms of matrices. So what we do is we get the coordinate vector of x with respect to b. Take note that b is a basis for v. And here we get the coordinate vector of t of x with respect to b prime. The nice thing about this matrix representation, a here is the matrix representation of t from b to b prime. Here, take note that when you apply t to x, you get t of x. What the matrix representation does is that when you apply this to the coordinate vector of x with respect to b, you get the coordinate vector of the image of t of x with respect to b prime. And that is that result.
Again, when you multiply the matrix representation of T from B to B prime, you multiply that to the coordinate vector of X with respect to B. What you get is the coordinate vector of T of X with respect to B prime. So this very important equation tells us that we can compute T of X indirectly. Based from this equation, what do we do? First, we compute the coordinate vector of x with respect to b and then multiply this on the left by the matrix representation to get the coordinate vector of t of x with respect to b prime. How can we get t of x? Since we already have t of x b prime, so suppose that is a1 up to a m, Take note that these are the coefficients of the ordered basis B prime. So suppose that B prime is W1 up to WM. So this is the coefficient of W1 and so on. Which means that what is our T of X? Our T of X is A1 W1, A2 W2 up to AM WM. So, for example, we have this linear transformation from R2 to R2. We have here the images of the standard basis for R2. Our B here is 1, 0, 0, 1, our standard basis. And let us recall that if we know where a transformation takes the basis elements, then that defines our linear transformation. We want to find the matrix representation of T from B to B prime, where B prime is also the same as B, the standard basis. And once we have this, we want to compute what T of X is using this matrix representation. So let us proceed in getting the matrix representation of T from B to B prime. Again, my B is the same as B prime and it's the ordered basis 1, 0, 0, 1. This matrix can be computed by first getting the images of the basis elements and then what do you do you get the coordinate vector with respect to b prime which in this case is also this one since t takes 1 0 to 2 1 what is now the coordinate vector of this with respect to the ordered basis? So we are getting the coordinate vector of 2, 1 with respect to the ordered basis 1, 0, 0, 1. Take note that it's just itself. Correct? Because 2, 1 is equal to 2 times 1, 0 plus 1 times 0, 1. So the nice thing about this Standard basis is that the coordinate vector of any column matrix will just be itself. So similarly, the coordinate vector of T of 0, 1 with respect to B prime, which is negative 3, 2, will also be equal to negative 3, 2. So hence, the matrix representation is just equal to to 1, negative 3, 2. That concludes the first one. For the second one, we want to get T of X. What we will do is we will make use of the fact that we had earlier. When you multiply the matrix representation of T to the coordinate vector of X with respect to B, you get the image of t of x with respect to b prime. Let us suppose that x is the column matrix a1, a2. 
if that is the case, this will also be its coordinate vector, correct? Because our B here is the standard basis. From here, when we multiply this matrix 2, negative 3, 1, 2, and I multiply that to A1, A2, that will be the coordinate vector of T of X with respect to B prime. This is 2A1 minus 3A2. This is A1 plus 2A2. From here, this is equal to the coordinate vector of T of X with respect to B prime. But then again, B prime is just this ordered basis. So this one will already give you your T of X. This is now T of X. Let's consider another example. Suppose that T is a linear transformation from P1 to P2, which sends a polynomial in P1 to itself times X. Let us find the matrix representation with respect to the following standard basis. First, we have to get the images of the elements in B. So we will get T of 1 and t of x. t of 1 by definition is x times 1. t of x is equal to x times x which is equal to x squared. So therefore what is the coordinate vector of t of 1 with respect to b prime? This records the coefficients of 1, x, and x squared. So therefore, this is equal to t of 1 is just x, so we have 0, 1, 0. Next, the coordinate vector of t of x with respect to b prime is equal to, we only have x squared, so it's 0, 0, 1. Because x squared is 0 times 1 plus 0 times x plus 1 times x squared. So therefore, what is our matrix representation from B to B prime? It's just the matrix whose columns are this one. So it's the matrix 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. Here is a special case when T is a linear transformation from V to V. The domain is the same as the codomain. We say that our linear transformation is a linear operator. And just like what we had in this example, your B is the same as B prime. Instead of writing T from B to B, we just drop the other one. We just write it as T of B. And we say that it is the matrix representation of T with respect to B. We no longer say the matrix representation of B with respect to B and B. Here's another example. Here we have a linear operator from P2 to P2. It maps a polynomial P of X to P of 3X minus 5. Again, we want to find the matrix representation of T with respect to the standard basis. And we will use the indirect procedure to compute t of 1 plus 2x plus 3x squared and check the result by computing this directly. So again, our ordered basis for P2 is 1x x squared. So first, let us compute the images of this. So t of 1. This is saying that you always replace the occurrence of x with 3x minus 5. But since there is no x here, t of 1 is still 1. What about t of x? t of x would now be equal to 3x minus 5. Again, you're just replacing all occurrence of x with 3x minus 5. And lastly, t of x squared is equal to 3x minus 5 squared. Replace x by 3x minus 5. This is 9x squared minus 30x 
plus 25. So therefore, what is now the coordinate vector of t of 1 with respect to b? It's equal to 1 times 1 and then the rest would be 0. The coordinate vector of t of x with respect to b, we have 3x minus 5. So we have negative 5, 3, 0. Because this is negative 5 times 1 plus 3 times x plus 0 times x squared. And lastly, the coordinate vector of t of x squared with respect to b. Remember that we are starting with the coefficient of 1. So we have 25, negative 39. And therefore, the matrix representation of T with respect to B will just be the matrix which consists of these three columns. That's 1. Next, let's have 2. Let us compute t of 1 plus 2x plus 3x squared. Let me first write this as v. We will use this formula, right? When you multiply the matrix representation of t to the coordinate vector of v, you will get the coordinate vector of T of V. From here, what is the coordinate vector of V? The coordinate vector of V is 1, 2, 3. We now substitute. When you multiply that to coordinate vector of V with respect to B, this will be the coordinate vector of T of V with respect to B. This product is equal to 66, negative 84, 27. This is our coordinate vector of T of V with respect to B, which means that T of V is equal to 66 times 1 minus 84x plus 27x squared. For 3, when you compute t of 1 plus 2x plus 3x squared directly, this is 1 plus 2 times 3x minus 5 plus 3 times 3x minus 5 squared. Verify that when you simplify this polynomial, it's also the same as this. Here's another example. Suppose that T is a linear transformation from the set of 2 by 2 matrices to R3. And the matrix representation is given by this. Here, B and B prime are standard bases for M22 and R3 respectively. Let us find T of V for any V in M22. Our B is the standard basis for M22, that's E11, E21, E12, and E22. Recall that E11 is the matrix whose 1, 1 entry is 1 and the rest is 0. E21 is the matrix whose 2, 1 entry is 1 and the rest is 0, and so on. And our B prime is the standard basis for R3. Let's take V to be equal to V is in M22. We have to compute T of V. Using again this fact, the matrix representation of T from B to B prime, when you multiply it to the coordinate vector of V with respect to B, you get the coordinate vector of T of V with respect to B prime. Let us substitute. 
this matrix here is this matrix. What is the coordinate vector of V with respect to B? Take note that V is equal to A11 times E11 plus A21 times E21 plus A12 times E12 plus A22 times E22. So therefore, the coordinate vector of V with respect to B is just a11, A21, A12, A22. I will plug this in here. When we multiply this, we get A11 minus A21. Second row times this is a21 minus A12. And lastly, third row is A12 plus A22. This is the coordinate vector of T of V with respect to B prime. But then again, B prime is just the standard basis. So this is already your T of V. So hence, T maps a 2 by 2 matrix to this column matrix. Lastly, let us go back to the linear transformation that we had in the first few slides of this lesson. We have this linear transformation induced by the matrix A, T A of X is equal to a times x. What would be the matrix representation of this linear transformation with respect to the standard ordered basis of Rn and Rm? So to get the matrix representation of this transformation with respect to the standard ordered basis, recall that we have to get the images of basis elements in B. This is and then get the coordinate vector with respect to B prime. But what is the image of E1. What is E1? Recall that E1 is the column matrix with 1 on the first entry and 0 everywhere else. When you multiply A with this one, what will you get? You get the first column of A. Similarly, when you get the image of EN, that is a times En and this is A times 0, 0 until 1 on the last entry. This is the last column of A. And take note that when you get the coordinate vector of this with respect to the ordered basis, it will just be equal to itself. This one will also be This is the same as this because your B prime here is the standard basis. So therefore, what is now this matrix representation? It's the matrix whose first column is this one. But this is first column of A and so on until the last column of A. So therefore, what is this matrix? This matrix is precisely A. Hence, the matrix representation of the linear transformation induced by A with respect to the standard ordered basis for Rn and Rm is just equal to the matrix itself. We will end this lesson by giving some properties of matrix representations. 
Suppose that we have two linear transformations, T1 is from U to V and T2 is from V to W. Suppose that B1, B2, and B3 are bases for U, V, and W respectively. So from here, you already have an idea that we are going to talk about the composition because you have a linear transformation from U to V and then V to W. So this linear transformation is T1, this linear transformation is T2. So when you apply T1 first and then apply T2, that is T2 circle T1, correct? And that will be a linear transformation from U to W. This is T2 circle T1. Now again, we want to view this as matrices. We can view this linear transformation as the matrix representation of T1 from U to V. So that's B1 to B2. Here, this is the matrix representation of T2 from V to W. So that's from B2 to B3. The question is, what is the matrix representation of this composition? It turns out that this matrix representation, it will now be from B1 up to B3. Because B1 is the ordered basis for U and B3 is the ordered basis for W. This is just equal to, what do you think? It will just be equal to the product of this two matrix representation. We also start with T2. From B2 to B3 and then matrix representation of T1 from B1 to B2. And this is what we had. The matrix representation of T2 circle T1 from B1 to B3 is the product of matrix representation of T2 from B2 to B3 times the matrix representation of T1 from B1 to B2. Take note of the basis here. From B1 to B2 and then B2 to B3. So that's why the final one is from B1 to B3. Just like what you have here. Let's talk about invertible linear operators. A linear operator is said to be invertible whenever there exists a linear transformation T inverse such that the composition of this transformation with T is equal to the identity linear operator. What is this identity linear operator? It sends each element of V to itself. So this is just the inverse function, except that we want that inverse function to be also a linear transformation. How is the concept of invertible linear operators related with matrix representations? Well, it turns out that if your linear operator is invertible, then any matrix representation of T will also be an invertible matrix or non-singular. Moreover, when these two conditions hold, the matrix representation of the inverse is just equal to the inverse of the matrix representation of T with respect to B. Meaning to say, if you already have a matrix representation of T and you want to get the matrix representation of its inverse with respect to the same basis B, all you have to do is to just get the inverse of this matrix. To illustrate the properties that I have just discussed, let us consider again these two linear transformations that we had earlier. This time around, we want to get the composition of T1 and T2 and get the matrix representation of the composition, where again, B and B prime are the standard ordered basis for T1 and T2 respectively. Let us get T2 circle T1 of P of X. So by definition, this is T2 of T1 of P of X. T2 
P1 sends P of X to X times P of X. So this is T2 times X times P of X. What about T2? It sends any polynomial to the polynomial except that you replace all occurrences of X with 3X minus 5. So I will just replace all occurrences of x with 3x minus 5. Now what is p of x here? Take note that p2 circle t1 is from p1 to p2. So therefore this polynomial here is an element in p1. So let us call this p of x a0 plus a1x because p1 is a set of polynomials with degree less than or equal to 1. So therefore, we have T2 circle T1 of this polynomial, A0 plus A1x is equal to this one, 3x minus 5 times this one wherein I replace x by 3x minus 5. So we have A0 plus A1 times 3x minus 5. Hence, this is A0 times 3x minus 5 plus A1 times 3x minus 5 squared. Let us now compute the matrix representation of T2 circle T1 with respect to B and B prime. I will do this using two methods. So for the first method, I will use the definition. So that is, I will compute for the images of the basis elements in B. What is T2 circle T1 of 1? From here, if we have 1, that means A0 is equal to 1 and A1 is equal to 0. So therefore, it's equal to 1 times 3x minus 5 or 3x minus 5. What about T2 circle T1 of x? That means A0 is 0 and A1 is equal to 1. A0 is equal to 0 and a1 is equal to 1. So we have 3x minus 5 squared or 9x squared minus 30x plus 25. So therefore, the matrix representation is equal to what matrix? We get the coordinate vector of this with respect to B prime. What is our B prime? So therefore, we have the column negative 5, 3, 0. And this one here, what is the coordinate vector of this with respect to B prime? We have 25, negative 30, 9. 25, negative 30, 9. What is this? Matrix representation by our definition, it's equal to the matrix representation of T2 from B prime to B prime, or just B prime here, times the matrix representation of T1 from B to B prime. We already computed this matrix representation. The matrix representation of T2 with respect to B prime is given by this matrix, this one. And this matrix representation of T1 from B to B prime is given by this. When we multiply these two matrices, we get negative 5, 25, 3, negative 30, and lastly, 0, 9 which is exactly the same as we, what we had here in method one. Now, in the examples that we had in this lesson, we only consider the standard ordered basis. 
the reason why we did that is because it's easy to compute the coordinate vectors. But what if the basis that is given to us is no longer the standard ordered basis? Our next lesson will tell us how to compute for matrix representations if our basis is no longer the standard ordered basis.